model a low poly axe that's game ready. We're going to do some simple textures on this later on, but right now we're going to go ahead and get started with setting up our scene file. First thing we want to do is create a project folder for Maya. Let's come under File, Project Window, and let's just click on that. So this is going to launch our project window so that we can create a folder that's unique for this particular project. And this is a habit you want to get into for every new project with Maya. You want to make sure that you have a separate project folder for each of your projects. Within the project folder, if you have multiple models that you're creating, they can all be saved within the scene file or the scene directory within the project folder. Okay, currently it says default. I'm going to go ahead and click New. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to call this Project 1 Low Poly X. And for the location, Maya usually defaults to the Documents Maya Projects folder. That's where I'm going to leave mine. I'm working on my home computer. If I were working someplace else, I would probably set this up to be out on my desktop and then I would have the folder out on the desktop and work from there and that way I could easily copy that folder over to a thumb drive. I'm going to just hit cancel on that and I'm going to save mine in this location. It's going to create all of these directories here so I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. Okay, I'm going to come down and I'm going to navigate out to my Documents folder, Maya, Projects, and I should have a Project 1 Low Poly Axe right here. And these are all the subdirectories that it's made. So Maya creates this structure for itself so it can look for things that it needs for the scene. So in the case of Scenes directory right here, when we save our first scene out, once we create it, it's going to go into this Scenes directory. We're going to source in an image. I'm going to click on this right here. I've already copied it, so I'm just going to paste it in here. I have an axe image plane that I'm going to use as a guideline, as a template. I'm going to go ahead and close that. So Maya is going to source an image in through the source images directory. When Maya writes something out, it writes it out to the images directory. Okay, that's just kind of a basic overview of the structure here. I'm going to go ahead and click over here onto Maya. And I'm going to bring that image plane in here. I'm going to just tap on the space bar. It's going to bring up that four panel layout. I'm going to go to my side view, tap on that, and then under the pull down for the viewport under view, I'm going to come down here where it says image plane and import the image. Okay. You can see it's taken me right out to that directory. If it hasn't done that, you may need to set your project. I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm going to click on the image plane. It's going to grab that image and it's going to bring it in to the scene here in this side view. All right, I want to move this around a little bit. Right now it's intersecting in the center. So I'm going to hit Control A that brings up the attribute editor. I'm going to slide down here to the bottom where it says placement extras. Right down here where it says image center, we have three channels that are controlling the image plane one shape, which is what this is right here. Whenever you see three channels running like this, these are X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if I move this let's say up four units, we're going to see the image plane move up four units over here in the viewport. Okay, it's probably up just a little too high. Let me just bring it down to right about above the, the image plane. Let me bring it down here. It's still just running underneath the ground plane. I think to make things a little bit easier, I should probably rotate this though so that we are extruding down. Let's go ahead and with this selected, I'm going to hit E on the keyboard and I'm going to rotate this. You can see it's pivoting right there. I'm 
going to rotate it so it's just about like this. So the head of the axe is actually more straight across. And we do have some curvature here in the handle, but this looks a lot better as far as setting it up for modeling. Okay, I'm going to come back here to the image center. I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard just to get out of that rotation. And I'm going to hold down the control key and just snap this over here a little bit. Okay, it actually snapped over, which looks fine. There it is. So it's the Z coordinate that I'm using to slide it side to side. And I'm just going to center up on the center line. Okay, this is below the ground plane. So again, I'm going to raise that up now. I'm just clicking and dragging, holding down the control key on a PC. It's the command key on a Mac. And I'm bringing this up just so it's right above our ground plane. Okay. When this is at zero, I'm going to set it back. What often happens is this is sitting right in the middle of our scene. If I tap the space bar, we can actually go out here and see what's going on. Okay, we're going to be modeling right here in the center. So what I'm going to do is actually push this image plane back to the back of the grid here. I know I have 12 units along here. I want to push that back on the x-axis, so I'm going to put a negative 12 here and hit enter, and that's going to push it to the very back of the ground plane. Alright, with that done, I'm going to tap on the side view. This is how we're going to start our scene right here, and I'm going to just center it up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start with a cube. We're going to do what's called box modeling. This keeps everything fairly even as far as our polygons. With game modeling it doesn't really matter if we have quads or triangles. In fact, we're going to produce some triangles intentionally just to minimize the number of faces we have. I'm going to just go ahead and drop a cube out here. You can see it's dropped down here in our origin 000 space. And I'm going to go to a 2 by 2 side panel layout so I can see things in 3D and also in my uh, side view. Right now it defaulted to the front view. I'm going to come under Panels, Orthographic, and I'm going to choose the side view. So there's our side view. I'm going to slide this over just a little bit. And I'm going to hit W on the keyboard to bring up the Move tool, and I'm only sliding it up on the Y axis to bring it up here to the center. Okay, let's go ahead and shape this a little bit. So we're modeling an axe, and we know that the blade's going to have some thickness to it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at about this size right here. And then I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, and I'm going to scale it just in the z-axis. So right about here. I'm also going to center it up here. And let's go to x-ray view so we can see through to our image plane. Under Shading, I'm going to select X-Ray. There, that allows us to see through, but we still have some opacity left on our cube that we're working with. Okay, so we can see where our subdivisions are, which is very nice on this. When we're learning how to model and uh, figuring out where we're going to place our edges, this is very helpful right here. So at this point we really need to get into shaping it and dropping in edge loops. So I'm going to go to Vertex. I'm right mouse clicking, selecting Vertex, and I'm going to drag marquees. So this is important because if I just come over here and click on this, clicking down here in the corner, I'm only selecting the one up here in the front. So if I start moving this around, and placing it, I'm not getting the one on the back side. Okay, so I don't want to do that. I want to make sure I'm getting both of them. So I'm going to drag a marquee. It's going to select both of these at the back of the blade. And I'm going to drag it up to this point right here. Okay, I'm doing the same thing here. I'm going to take these and I'm going to actually pull these back right here. 
Okay, at this point we've maxed out what we can do with this cube and we're going to have to drop in some edge loops. Let's go ahead and do that. Under Mesh Tools, we have an Insert Edge Loop tool. So this allows us to put a loop or an edge all the way around an object. It's not sitting out here on our shelf and I'd like it to be out here because we're going to access this quite a bit. I'm going to hold down the Control Shift key and I'm going to click on this. And it's going to drop it out here on the shelf. Okay. Now I can click on this. I can see over here along my tools that this is the active tool. So the way this works, if I want to send an edge around this direction vertically, I'm going to have to click on an edge in the opposite direction. So I'm going to click on this edge up here on the top and I'm holding it down with my left mouse button. This allows me to drag it into place. Okay. So I'm going to set it right about here. I'm going to go ahead and drop another one right here and this one. Okay. I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard. That's going to end that tool and then I'm going to go right into my vertex components and I'm actually going to grab a marquee all the way across the top grabbing these here and hit W on the keyboard and I'm going to move these down. Same thing here. I'm going to pull this down. Same thing here and there. Okay. I'm looking at this one. It can come up just a little bit. Okay. So I'm really trying to follow these edges as closely as possible. Let's drag this one over here and line it up. Okay. For this one, I'm going to just pull it in a little bit. All right, so we can see that our edge along here is got some curvature that's happening with these edges coming along horizontally. Let's go ahead and drop in some edge loops in this direction now. So I'm going to click on here to my edge loop tool. I'm going to drop in one here and you can see it's following the curvature now. It's actually dropping fairly closely into place. I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard again to end that process. Right mouse click and go to Vertex. Dragging a marquee so that I'm selecting both of these on the back of the blade. W on the keyboard. And I'm just going to pull these out a little bit to capture that curvature. Okay. So these have angled up here. I want to pull them down. Again, I'm dragging marquees to make sure I'm getting both of the vertices. I'm going to just make a little adjustment to this one here and here. Great. So, so far we're just shaping in one direction. We don't have an image plane of the top of our axe, but we do know that axes kind of taper off in the back here and then as they come together and wrap around the handle, they're going to narrow down and then of course narrow down even more as they come out to the blade. Okay, we'll worry about that in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and continue on shaping out the head of the axe out to the blade here. Okay, so we're at a point here where we're out of polygons to work with, so we're going to have to start extruding. Let's go ahead and do that. I know when I bring this blade down, I'm going to need an edge along the center here. Okay, so I want to drop an edge loop down the center here. But how do I know what's exactly center? We are modeling right here on the origin. Okay, so let's go ahead and just drop in an edge loop down the center here. I'm going to select the Move tool. I'm going to hold down the X key. You can see that it's changed there. It's also highlighted the snapping tool up here for Snap to Grid. The X translate so that it snaps into place. Great, so let's leave that there for now and let's grab the faces along the front. So I can come over here and click holding the shift key down and select these. That's one way of doing it. I can also come over here and drag a marquee. We see that it's 
captured the ones along the side that we don't want, but I can also hold down that control key which deselects and drag another marquee across here. And that way I'm only making two clicks to, instead of six to grab all of these. Okay, let's go ahead and extrude. I'm using the shortcut out here on my shelf, but that can be found under Edit Mesh, Extrude. Okay, so if I pull this out, let me move the dialog box out here. If I pull this out in the Z Translate and I look at this, it's doing what I want it to do. We're going to have to do some additional shaping and that's expected here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually push this back. We're going to go ahead and do this step by step. I'm going to scale and move this until I get it into place. So I'm scaling in the Y axis using the cube here at the end of the manipulator and then I'm pulling it into place using the cone or the arrow. Okay, that's pretty close. It's a little bit over right here, but I'm not going to worry about it. I am going to come back here and straighten these out using the move tool. I'm going to push these back up into position. Straighten that out a little bit more. And let's go ahead and fix that right now. Pull it back as well. Great. Great. I'm going to hit Q to end that. I'm going to go back to my face selection. Maya should remember the last faces that I selected, and it has. This time I'm going to use Control E to do an extrude. That's also Command E on a Mac. And again, I'm going to pull this out to here. I'm going to scale it. And then I'm going to hit Q to end it. And I'm going to go to Vertex, drag a marquee, W on the keyboard, and I'm going to pull these down into position. So this one's actually ending right here. This is our edge coming along from our initial extrude of those six faces. This is going to be another extrude down here. Okay, let's get these all into position and line them up. Alright, so we know our axe is definitely tapering down at this point. Let's start adjusting that, okay? I'm going to go back to my face selection, hit R on the keyboard to scale, and I'm just going to scale in the x-axis. Okay? We should probably start scaling this down as well. We know it's going to start tapering right about here. I'm going to go to Edge Component. I'm going to double click on the edge here. It sends a loop all the way around when I double click on that. And then again I can use the x-axis and I can start scaling this in. Okay, This is probably starting to taper down as well. And let's go ahead and grab the ones here on the back. I'm going to go to Vertex, drag a marquee. It's going to select all of these on the back here. And again, I'm going to scale it down about to here. Okay, that looks fairly reasonable for an axe that we would have. The handle coming up through here, and our blade is starting to taper down. Okay. Let's finish off. We've got two more extrudes. I'm going to go back to faces. It has selected those same six faces out here in the front. I'm going to hit Control E. I'm going to pull this out in the local Z translate. I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard and go to Vertex, dragging a marquee on the top row of vertices, W on the keyboard, and I'm going to pull these into position. This is looking a little off right there, so actually I've got a, a vertex that's somehow gotten out of place right there. 
Um, I'm going to put it back into place. This is not a real big deal. I'm just going to hit the scale key and I'm going to drag the y-axis down. That's going to flatten it out. Okay, and then I'm going to go back to the move and it looks like I need to also scale it in this direction. So I'm going to hit scale again. I'm, I'm going to grab the z-axis and pull that in. Okay, so that flattens everything out and now I'm going to just move it into position here. Same thing down here and lining that up. All right, I'm going to go back to face. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard and I'm going to taper this down as we're getting closer to the end of the blade. So right about there and we'll have to come back and make some adjustments here. Maybe something like that. This can probably come down a little bit more. Okay, let's go back to face. It's going to reselect those faces. I'm going to hit Control E to extrude again, pulling that out, hitting Q to end that process, right mouse click, go to vertex, dragging a marquee grabbing the top row of vertices, W on the keyboard, and moving those into position. All right, let's go back and select face. It's going to reselect those six faces. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, and this is the end of our blade right here. Okay, so I'm going to bring it down to something fairly narrow. It doesn't have to be exactly like a tiny little blade here, but I'm going to get it fairly close like this. So it looks believable, and if we need to come back and make some adjustments along this other edge, the one in the center, we can do that. But for now, I'm going to leave it like that, and let's work on this lower part of the axe here. I'm going to select the faces down here. I'm just going to shift select here and here. Okay, let's make sure I haven't selected anything else. And I'm going to hit Control E. I'm going to pull these down. Just right about here. Okay, let's go ahead and select Vertex. Drag a marquee. I'm going to put this one here, this one here, and Let's drag this one down here, and then the edge of the blade right there. Pull that into position. Okay, so let's look at that. So here's an example where we don't really need this edge along here. We can have a triangle in our game engine, and uh, it's not going to cause any problems. So let's go ahead and select this edge. I'm going to just double click. And instead of hitting delete, if I hit delete, it has left the vertex behind, okay? And we don't want that. So let me just undo that. I've got that selected. That's the edge selected. And I'm going to hit delete by holding down the control key. The command key, uh, you would have that selected on a Mac. So control delete. And it's taken the vertices with it, which is what we want. We don't want to have any floating vertices out there that are not attached to lines or to edges. Okay? Alright, so that looks good. So let's go ahead and save our scene right now. We've done a lot of work here. We don't want to lose it. I'm going to come under File, Save Scene As, and this should take me out to my project directory. Okay, if it's not doing that, you want to come under File, Set Project, and then you want to come out and navigate to where you have that. If it's on the desktop, you're going to have to navigate out to the desktop. And then you want to select just that folder. So I'm going to select Project 1 Low Poly Axe. 
I want to be at the at the project folder level. I don't want to go inside that. And then I'm just going to hit set. Okay, so now Maya knows that it's pointing at that project folder. So when I go to save my scene, it should be taking you right into the projects and then the project name and then the scenes directory. Okay, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to call this Axe Model version 1. Actually, I'm going to put a 0 1. And I'm going to switch this over to Maya ASCII. So that's a .ma. And I, I'm going to hit Save As. All right, I have a student version here. So go ahead and just say Continue. And now if I look up here along the top here, I should see that directory structure happening and then ending up right here with the scene file name that we just saved. Okay, let's finish up by making one more extrude here. I'm going to select faces. I'm going to grab these four faces under here. We're going to extrude down this area right here. Okay, I'm going to hit Control E. I'm going to pull this down to here. And in this case, we're not going to delete these edges. We actually need them to help shape this curve right here. I'm going to hit Q to get out of that. I'm going to go to Vertex, drag a marquee to grab all three of those. W on the keyboard, and I'm going to pull these into position and creating that curvature. Great. All right. So this ends it for the modeling of the axe head. We'll come back in the next lesson and we will model